And now on Nights with Steve Price, the Courses and Career Show with Danny Bielek. Thanks to Management Consultancy International. Go to mci.edu.au. Danny's in the studio with us. Good on you. Thanks for coming in. I know you're struggling a bit with your health, but uh, you got here anyway. It's all good. I'm here, Steve. You're not like a Gen Y uh, worker. No, now, sir. Hard working Gen Xer. I define am. Gen Y for me. Gen Y is people aged between 24 and 34 in 2015. So right. I think it's been born between 1980 and 1990. Is okay. That, is that so right? the reason we're discussing that, if you've read your Telegraph today, uh, the Telegraph has a story suggesting that a whole lot of employers around Australia are fed up with Gen Yers because they take sickies, mm. uh, they don't work hard enough. Mm. Uh, they don't come trained well enough. Yep. And so the whole apprenticeship scheme system, the whole recruitment of young workers has fallen over because of the attitude of these particular workers. I want to throw out tonight to our audience on 131873, are you an employer and do you accept that there are a bunch of workers, male and female, between those ages of what again? 30? 24 and 34. 24 and 34 who yep. don't work hard enough. Yep. Who are bludgers, who uh, take sickies, who text in that they're going to be late to work. Is this stuff true? Yeah, look, there, there's yes. a fair amount. Oh, look, there is a fair amount of this. Um, there's really? no doubt about it. So first of all, let's talk about the apprenticeship problem. Um, the I've got here the statistics in front of me that say that apprenticeships have collapse. Steve, we've talked about this time and time again, and the statistics came out uh, over the last week or so from the National Centre for Vocational Education Research, a federal government department. These mm -hmm. guys can count. They know what they're doing. They've seen a decrease in one year of 18.3%. Commencements um, just in one quarter were down 2.9%. So we're talking about a massive collapse. Why? Um, in numbers. A lot of this has been driven by funding. Um, so a lot of the funding dried up. There was this whole perfect storm that sort of happened under the former uh, Prime Minister Julia Gillard and, and before that when Kevin. she was uh, Education Minister. Uh, she oversaw uh, the removal of uh, a whole range of subsidies and supports for, um, for employers. At the same time, Fair Work Australia upped the rates that employers had to pay at exactly the same time. They made it so that a lot of apprentices could finish their apprenticeships much earlier than was economically beneficial for uh, for for the bosses, for the, for the employers. So the employers basically threw their hands up in the air and said, you know what? Not interested. Then at the same time, all these programs, uh, you know, the government started to backtrack. I oh, will do this, do a bit of this, do a bit of that, do a bit of that. And they're starting to see exactly what we've seen reported in the Daily Telegraph today. This new generation of people coming through uh, and the new generation are different to the old generation. You know, we've heard this for time immemorial. Um, you know, the young are lazy, this, that and the other. Is it true? The reality is, Steve, that every generation is different from the last. Um Respect is expected um, to be afforded to generation wise because apparently their brains are wired differently. But the respect, uh, what it, what doesn't appear to be taught in schools these days, is respect is a two way street. There is this thing that we call work readiness. It has a name now. Once upon a time, it was just kind of what you did, um, but now it has a name, and they try and introduce it in the curriculum and have it as a program or whatever. Once upon a time, Steve, um, you know, when, when I finished school uh, at, at age 18, not, not a day before, um, I uh, used to go out on the weekends at 14, 15, 16 years old, and I just used to find work. I just used to find work, and my parents let me do it. These days, kids get, uh, kids get driven to school. Uh, that's an attitudinal problem. If you were to say to someone, I reckon your 16-year-old ought to go out and mow lawns. Or, you know, I have probably the grubbiest car in the street. Do you know how many people have come and said to me, Mr. Bielek, your car is filthy. Can I wash it for you? Give me five bucks. Give me 10 bucks. No. Give me 20 bucks. Can I wash it for you? Nobody does it. They're happy to walk past my filthy car. Yeah. I was on the project talking about this tonight. And I do worry about generalising and generalities about things. In every generation, whether it be my parents' generation that came out of the, the Depression and through the, the Second World War, my generation, the baby boomers, uh, the Generation Xs, which is you and now the Generation Ys, yep. there's hard workers and there's not hard workers. Correct. Uh, it doesn't matter what period of history you're talking about. There are bludgers and people who took sickies when I was 
started work in 1972 mm. and there were people like me who never took a sickie, mm. was happy to work six days a week and wanted to learn, soaked up everything and made a success out of my career. Yep. So I don't know that it's very different today than it was in the 70s and 80s. Surely. I think there is a difference, Steve. Oh, I think that, really? honestly, this is the first generation mm. that has not had uh, a an instant an instilled, not even institutionalised, but an instilled sense of work prior to finishing high school. And I would say to you that my generation had that. Your generation, Steve, did you work before you finished school? Yeah, of course. Yeah, there you go. Well, of course. Of course. Worked I mean, yeah, it, it just rolls off your tongue. Worked of course. my holidays. Of course. So go ask. So do your, you've, you've got two teenage daughters. One's about to, uh, to, to doing... finish school. She's about to do her HSC this year. How much work does she do during the holidays? None. Why? Too much study, she says. Oh. How different is that? To... Too much study, she says. Why is that more? I did a lot of study when uh, I was a kid. And she I was does, no good at it, but I did does a lot. sport every weekend. So, uh, no, they don't. But she has friends in her group yep. who all do do that. Work right. in a yogurt shop, work in an ice cream shop, work yep. in a hamburger st- store, yep. all, over, all around the place. Yep. Let's take some calls anyway. I'd like to hear from uh, people out there who are employed Gen Wires if you know what they are, or do you agree with me that every generation has people that are slackers and people who aren't? G'day, John. G'day, mate. How you going? Good, thanks. Look, mate, I happen to be Gen Y. Uh, I grew up on a farm uh, about an hour and a half inland from Tari. Uh, I moved to Sydney looking for work. I work seven days a week, and I've tried about four times to get an apprenticeship, and they've all told me I'll get bored in doing what they're doing. Jim, um, what sort of apprenticeship, John? Heavy vehicles mechanic. So now I operate uh, excavators and whatnot because the only job that I could get, I couldn't get an apprenticeship. They all told me I'd be I'd get bored. Well, this is Danny's out. point about the apprenticeship system's collapsed and it's not being run properly. So the people yeah. telling you that, are they career advisors? Uh, I went to my first um, my first interview was in, a, in a, an apprenticeship employment agency. Right. And um, I did like a mathematics, uh, mechanical aptitude and English written test. Um, all three I scored in the high 90s by end of percentage and um, the the job was given to a kid who would never even seen a spanner before. Wow. I think it also comes down to the uh, the employers not wanting to um, take on somebody who's already got the skills because they can't teach them the way the, the shop wants to go. And also coming from the country, my... Um, my communication skills sometimes aren't great, and I go to say a word, and it comes out with a heavy Australian accent. And they look at me like I can't speak English, and go, "What, uh, John? John you're, uh, you're... Nothing wrong. Nothing wrong with your communication None skills, at all, mate. mate. Nothing. Nothing at all. Um, look, I, uh, you missed the point. You almost skirted over the bit that scared everyone off, and that is that you know what to do with the spanner. So you li- you can lift a spanner, and you can do it, which means you're a- actually probably halfway through your apprenticeship already. And this is a problem for employers, and this is part of the system that got broken. Broken under Gillard. This is part of the system that no one is so brave enough to fix. The for John? Because the problem is that you're halfway through your apprenticeship. So instead of an employer having you for four years or three years, they might get you for a year and change. Well, that's just not good enough for them, and it's not going to be economically viable. Um, it's 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 not being supported by the government, and so they'd rather have um, someone with half your skills and half your knowledge, and I promise none of your communication skills. They would rather have them instead of you because they can have. For, for four years. Well, I don't think well, John's uh, ever going to have a problem finding work. No, I don't think so. Have you? you... Uh, yeah. No, I never, never had a problem finding work. Wherever I go, I can get work no matter where I go. Um, but now I, I have my, my normal nine to five, which is uh, actually it's an eight till eight, <laughs> do 12 <laughs> hours, and then my Saturday, and then I run my own business on Sunday, just mowing lawns and whatnot. There well, you go. There you go. John is the, the great perfect Australian success story. Gen Y. Yeah. And so he is this absolutely... proves my point about you and your mates generalising. Yeah. Look at. <laughs> okay. It does to a point. But the problem is, Steve, that what we're not doing is that we're not capturing these people. So how does who John? Aren't able sorry to... to interrupt. How does John yeah. uh, maximise his credentials? Yes. Look, John is is the perfect candidate to be able to go to a training provider, figure out what it is he ultimately wants to do. And that was the big question that we yep. weren't able to ask him. That was the question, that- John. What? It, oh, John, what is it that you ultimately want to be able to do? Uh, mate, I would absolutely love to be a heavy vehicles mechanic. Um, I work like I work in the workshop where I do work now. Um, but yeah, I've been given the uh, given the choice of either driving him or starting at first year. 
on uh, on seventeen dollars an hour. But unfortunately, I've already got my my rent payments and my car and. I'm trying to save up for a house, so it's just not a viable option anymore. It okay. would have been when I was living at home, John, but not anymore. Give him a John, solution. I'm going to ask you to do me this tomorrow. Um, first of all, everything that you know right now can be captured, and so if you ever want to do training to be a heavy vehicle mechanic, you, everything that you already know can be captured through a process called recognition of prior learning. Then you only need to learn what is remaining. What I'd like you to do is contact me tomorrow. Um, I know some great heavy vehicle training organisations and I also know one of the largest heavy vehicle operators in the state of New South Wales and I'd love to put you uh, in contact with both of them because I'm sure they'd, uh, they'd grab you with both hands. Can you hang on for us, Johnny? Yeah, mate, of course. Hang on, we'll get you a number for Danny and we'll uh, pass that on to you and you can give him a call tomorrow. Hello, Roger, how are you? Good, how are you gentlemen this evening? We're how great. Roger? From the end of the war till 1972, we lived in the world of the Navy. The Nanny? The, ed- the Navy. Navy, yes. The educated labourer. Yeah. Huh? That could turn his hand to anything and was never out of work. Correct. From 1972 till the present day, we live in the land of the dead beast. Well, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Right? Does that mean you're born in 72 or you started work in 72? From 72, they voted in Whitlam. Right. Is, right. So, so it's people who were born in 72 or people who were working in 72? Look around you. How many, count me how many Australian born shearers they are today. I don't know. Hardly any. Any? Hardly any. Right. The bloke that just said to you then, I want to be a heavy vehicle mechanic. Yes. Before 1972, you threw your tools at the ute and you drove till you found a job. Well, he did that. He <laughs> came here from Taree. You didn't ring up a radio station and want this and want that and want something else. He didn't either. Well, he's a good bloke. Exactly, Roger. <laughs> We've convinced you. More calls in a moment, 28 to 10. You're listening to The Courses and Career Show with Danny Bielek. Thanks to Management Consultancy International. Go to mci.edu.au. Yep, Danny's with me. I've been a journalist since 1972, so that's a long time. What's that now? 43 years. Yep. Coming up to 43 years this November. I've never had any other career than that, and I've had about three employers in that 42-year mm. period. Youngsters these days don't ex- expect to have a career for life, do they? No. Well, in fact, um, I got uh, leaked a series of statistics today um, that show Generation Y, uh, this is a survey of, of Generation Y uh, people who said that nearly 50% of participants in this survey, uh, New South Wales residents aged 24 to 34, have said that they've had more than four jobs since leaving that's school a more than four a jobs thousand. that's a survey of, yeah it's that's all right um but six or uh, six or more jobs for nearly a quarter of them have had six or more jobs now this is this is some 20 something different Steve. careers or well it doesn't it doesn't, doesn't say, say but it's six or more jobs I, I think that's pretty substantial i can tell you that by the time i was 24 steve i had one job yeah that was it i had one job i went to university and while I was at university, I was working. I did my own stuff. And then I went and I got, I literally got plucked out of university. At the end of university, someone said, Danny, yep. you've got to come work for us. Well, I went from 72 to 87 in newspapers and had two employers, mm-hmm. News Limited and the Herald Weekly Times. Yep. And I went from 87 to today in radio. Right. And for all for with, one employer? With two employers. Right. You're a, you're a job hopper. You're more a job hopper than I am. Ross, hello. G'day. How are you going? Good. Thanks, uh, Ross. Well, your definition, uh, I have uh, two uh, General Y uh, children, and uh, I guess Ned's after that. I have a 29-year-old, 26, and a 21-year-old. Yes. With the 29 and uh, 26-year-olds uh, and their extended friends, I have great trouble in you generalising with uh, Gen Y as expecting and all that sort of stuff, because... I don't say that, Ross. Oh, hang on. Let me go Dan- through that. Danny, I, I have not seen anything more than these people wanting to get out and excel and work and get through and do do things and to achieve. So I... I, um... I think that's great. And I, that's the point I made on television tonight. It's the point I made here. Generalising about a birth uh, year group is very dangerous. Because, oh, it's really bad. Yeah. Um, like, well, you um, couldn't do it about a racial group. You'd be dra- dragged up before <laughs> some racial but, discrimination um... board. Two of my children are in that age group, and I uh, I know a lot of their friends. Yep. And they are all dedicated to achieving in life, 
They're not on dole and all that sort of stuff. They're dedicated to achieving. They're not looking for handouts. Um, and that's why I think, uh, you know, saying uh, they're Gen Y, uh, I think uh, with the people I know, being Gen Y is very positive. Good on you for defending them, yeah, Danny. No, Ross, and, and you're absolutely right. Look, I've got I've got teams of Gen Ys working with me at MCI, and some of these are just the most outstanding people. We've mm. got people who are trained as teachers. We've got people who are trained uh, as counsellors, uh, and they are assisting yeah. they're assisting our students every day. Uh, yeah. We've got people working in the marketing department. We've got people working in finance, and they're Generation Y. There's no doubt that these people are as motivated as anybody else. But the fact remains uh, that we also have a major youth unemployment problem that is not getting any better. I think, and the, that's, and the I think reali- that's a different issue. And, well, that's a different... No, no, no. What, what, I, what I want to say is yep. that the problem that we've got, if you've got a youth unemployment issue and you've got it in pockets of the state, for example, uh, in southwestern New South Wales and in, and in huge Sydney. swaths, uh, sorry, of southwestern Sydney uh, and in huge swaths of uh, the central coast and the north coast, you've got some really big pockets of, un- of unemployment, youth unemployment. And the problem is here that you actually don't have a culture of people just going out and getting ad hoc work in their teenage years and that's what sets people up with the basic skills that has gone away i agree with that i agree with that uh like uh my children uh newcastle based Mm-hmm. Yeah, and and, and, um, and to add on top of that, and to add on top of that, you've got the noise coming at them from inside the school, from the career advisors who are paid by the school, often paid by the state of New South Wales, to tell these um, pupils when they are in those formative years that it's university or death, and that's a big problem as well because there are huge amounts of opportunities in vocational training, there's huge uh, amounts of opportunities in in apprenticeships, and there's huge amounts of opportunities in informal and those work. Those people who don't want to go to university. Get out there, get your hands dirty. Uh, I did a traineeship uh, when I was going through, and I was lucky. I got a Commonwealth scholarship. And um, I worked on the tools for four years whilst I was doing um, uni part-time. Yeah, well, there's plenty of opportunity. They can start by washing my car on the weekend. <laughs> and that's what the point, Ross, is that your kids have learned from you. Hello, Ben. Yeah, hi, guys. How are you? We're great. Yeah, hi. Um, I completely agree with the last call. So I'm bang in the middle. I'm 30, Gen Y. Um, I left school quite early after year 10 and then went straight to work, working on a, actually delivering coke around Sydney and, and then progressed and, and worked and sort of learnt my trade, I guess, and then started in the office and worked my way up until I'm now a, a quite successful in a, one of the major retailers in Australia in transport and logistics. Good so stuff. It, it, it sounds... But uh, mates, uh, do you have mates or uh, it'll probably, and you find this... The circle you would you would move in that people would be like minded to you, but were there other uh, men and women at your school, girls and boys at your school who who didn't do that? Yeah, of course. I, I think there's there's a, there's a spectrum right across. And yep. It's down to the attitude, and I think what Danny just said around um, the careers people in school pushing people to university. I think it's a very valid point. Like the people I meet and the people around my age. It's, it's really interesting, you know, they go to uni, they do these big degrees in, in science or whatever the case may be, and they come out, they can't find work. Yeah, exactly. And then so they end up having to retrain and then start from the bottom somewhere else. So I think the system really needs to be looked at and actually encourage people. If School's not for everyone. So encourage people, give them the training to go out and, and start at the bottom, you know, not have that expectation that you're just going to come in and, and work. And, As usual, and that's Danny, what I see. shows you what our outstanding audience we've got. Yeah, and, and it's an incredibly diverse audience. I mean, Ben's been out there and he's done a Delivering whole lot Coke, of things. He started. Yeah, absolutely. By the age of 30, I mean, he's achieved so much. Um, ben, what, do you, what, what are you ultimately looking to do? So, well, I'm just, um, I'm right in the hunt now for another job, um, which will take me on an international year between China, Europe and Sydney. In logistics? In logistics, in, you know, the world is so small. It's Do a it. growing, growing field. Absolutely gr- growing and booming field too, isn't it, Ben? A hundred percent. You just think about online. Whenever you order something from China, Europe, the US, wherever, it's got to get to you somehow. And there's <laughs> thousands of people all doing it for oh, you. It doesn't an, happen by itself. You're, you're an inspiration, Ben. Thank you. Look at that. Two callers, outstanding young Australians, yep. Gen Ys, yep. disproving your cockamamie theory. <laughs> Hello, Michael. How are you? Oh, good, thanks, guys. How are you tonight? You're a counsellor? Uh, I am, but that's not why I'm calling. I, I'm actually a Gen Y, 30 years old. I run a few companies, and 
I actually see there is a big problem with people my age. It's not that they're lazy. It's not that they're not hardworking. They just expect everything straight away. I mean, some of the guys I hire, which are my age, they expect to be on the ninety hundred thousand dollar salary, mm. expect to have the car and all of that without actually starting somewhere low, building up their skills and expertise and going up those pay grades. It's interesting, isn't it, Michael, that the calls we're getting tonight from successful people of your in your age bracket are all in the car, probably on their way home from work, having done a twelve hour day at work. Just right, exactly what I'm doing right now. <laughs> That's what and happens. I, but I really want to share the point. It's not that they're not hard working. They just want everything now. Yeah. That's the issue. Yeah, well, I started on 17 bucks 50 a week, and I had to give a third of that to my old man for rent. Uh, well, I think I started my uh, first business selling a few CDs here and there at the age of 13, 14. So, yeah, and I was, I was mowing lawns up and down the streets of Bondi for five bucks probably a time. Probably buying CDs off Mike. Oh, probably. <laughs> <laughs> I, had, I had no time to listen to CVs. Too many cars to wash, too many lawns to And mow. how's it been going through life with the name Michael Hutchins? Uh, interesting, interesting. <laughs> I, can't, I can't sing anywhere near as well as I could, but, uh, you know. Oh, I bet you get that all the time. I bet you get that all the time. My apologies for raising it. Thank you, mate. Hello to you, Fred. Hey, buddy. How are you going? Good, Fred. I've been a Tyler for 26 years. I started off in my first year apprentice, six days a week. I was making $128 a week. That's tough, now, right? And now I get the apprentices who I pay two eighty, three hundred dollars $300 a week, and they say, oh, I'm only getting paid $280. I said, you're costing me money. You're not making me money yet. You, they have to make you money so you can pay them. So what makes you so, Fred, as a successful Tyler, what makes you now hire, hire apprentices? You're doing it. I want to hire apprentices because I think, you know what, at the end of the day, it's a, it's a good career path to go. I've been in the same job for 26 years. It's been very fruitful financially, and I've done contracts, and I've worked for high-profile people, and at the end of the day, it, you work with your hand, you get a lot of satisfaction. Yeah, and you want to pass those skills on. I know, but, but the problem is the parents, they don't want their kids to work hard. The kids come home dirty or late. They say, why is my son late? How come my son has to get up 5.30 in the morning to go to work? <laughs> Really? Five yeah, thirty that late? I get that. No, no I'd love to get that. up at five thirty. Like, I said to him, I've been you working twenty six years in the same job, and I leave home ten to six in the morning. I'm the boss. Yeah, it's good stuff, Fred. Nice to hear from you. There you go, successful Tyler. Hello, yeah. Hugo. Uh, good evening, gentlemen. How are you? Hugo's a career advisor at a Sydney high school. Let's Danny. hear it, Hugo. Let's hear it. Um, yeah, look, I I enjoy your show. I listen to it every Wednesday. Good man. Um, for me, it's like I consider the program as professional development. Um, however, university or death, I'm a career advisor that's quite happy and proactive in pushing students into their particular area. Well done. Um, right. what, what, what's, what area are you, what part of uh, Sydney are you in? Um, Inner West. Inner West, fantastic. <coughs> what, what sort of areas do you uh, encourage push your, your, encourage your students go. into? If, if uni's for them, I help them go to uni. If, if they're interested in a trade... I push them towards the trade. My, um, a lot of the fights I have are with the parents. Yeah, not surprising. Um, and look, I came from the same boat. My parents wanted me to go to uni. Um, and for me, uni wasn't, you know, at the time, wasn't for me. Yeah, me either. My parents just wanted me to go to work to get me out of home. <laughs> they were. Yeah. You know, there are there are so many levels in between um, being out there and being an apprentice and going and doing doing a university um, degree uh, and and many many pathways in between. Hugo, you must be across all that sort of stuff. Yeah, yeah. So Hugo, how do we get your colleagues in the career advisor world to to understand it to the level to that do you obviously what he does? does. Um, it's it's not only um, it's 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 a whole system. If, if you look at TAFE, and I know that. Um, in previous weeks, you, 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 you mentioned TAFE. But if you look at TAFE, I, I, it's been decimated. Um, funding. Yeah, yeah. Funding and, and people at TAFE, the, the, the lecturers there, the, um, the morale, you can see the morale going. I um, think we must do what well, we will do. Thanks, Hugo. We will do some uh, work in coming weeks on TAFE. We know that's a favourite topic of yours. One yep. last call. Jason, hello. Hello, uh, Steve. Yes, How Jason. are you? Good, mate. Excellent. I just wanted to. To, to mention a few things, I mean, the, fund of, uh, the fundamentals of a human being is the, the upbringing, their parents, their yep. morals. Uh, yeah, I mentioned and, to one of those other guys that you actually learn work ethics from your parents. That's right, that's right. I, I'm, I'm Gen X, 
and so forth. So I, I haven't got a trade beneath my belt, but I've worked in, I've worked, I've had um, only probably five employees uh, throughout my life since I was um, 17 years old. Well, that's right. Your f- parents have brought you up well, and you've got a great work ethic. My dad taught me you had to work hard. Yeah, mine too. And no two ways at, about it. That's it. That's it. That's it. Look, look you know, education's not just about school. How education's about... How successful we are, Danny. Yeah, absolutely. Sitting well, here. Well, I, I know I am, Steve. Wednesday night. Uh, you're a part of a very successful radio program. Absolutely. Thank you for coming in off your deathbed. Talk Thank to you, you next Steve. Week. Appreciate it.